10 Tips for Your Trips to Las Vegas Las Vegas, the city of bright lights and endless entertainment, where streets are lined with glitz, glamour, and a touch of sin. If you're a first-time visitor, the overwhelming array of options can be a bit daunting to say the least. And that's where we come in. Now, because everybody has their own taste and come to Las Vegas for different reasons, we can't tell you what's best for you in Sin City. What we can do, however, is share with you a few tips that you might find helpful as you can prepare for your first visit. So, let's jump right in. Number 10. Google Before You Book for those of you out there that are planning a trip to Vegas and the only thing you're Googling is what is the hottest month in Las Vegas, there's a little tip for you. You might want to Google what events are being held in Las Vegas with the dates of your stay inserted. Why? Well, thank you for asking. From the CES to the SEMA show to the Las Vegas Grand Prix, some of these events can easily draw anywhere from 150,000 attendees and upwards. And with the arrival of the 65,000-seat Allegiant Stadium in 2020, Las Vegas is now home to the former Oakland Raiders of the National Football League and all of its rowdy fans. And if you don't know anything about Raiders fans, Google them, because we're being polite when we say rowdy. But not only is the Allegiant Stadium home to the Raiders, but in 2023, it will also be hosting big acts such as Taylor Swift, Pink, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. This is important for you to know because events like these can cause hikes in room prices, which affect room availability for your hotel of choice, and can be overwhelming for some, as the already crowded streets, hotels, restaurants, and casinos in Las Vegas can become even more congested. And there's one more tip in regards to this. If you have a restaurant that you're looking forward to trying out, make reservations ahead of time because there's a good chance it'll be booked out solid if you wait. Number 9. Stay on the Strip If you've never been to Las Vegas and simply go online to book your hotel stay without looking up its location, there's a good chance that you're going to be doing a lot of cursing. Let's say that you want to decide to save a few bucks so you book your stay at a hotel in downtown Las Vegas, but your plan is to spend most of your time on the Strip. Well, if your plan was going to drop off your bags and walk the Strip, good luck with that because downtown Las Vegas is an hour's walk away from the Strip. Our recommendation? Stay at a hotel that is close to the center of the main strip as possible. That way, you'll be at the core of the strip and have the best access to great places to shop, lots of restaurants, clubs, show, a great nightlife atmosphere, and best of all, your room won't be far away. Number 8. Pick the hotel that suits you even though Las Vegas was billed as a city for non-stop partying, not everybody that visits is looking to get wild and let loose. So whether you're a person that loves action or one that prefers quiet surroundings, with a little piano music being played in the lobby by a decent pianist who also happens to be a terrible singer, then it would behoove you to Google your preferred hotel to see what type of crowd it caters to, and to also make sure it's within your budget. But whichever hotel you choose and whatever you choose to do there or on the strip, don't worry. What happens in Vegas? stays in Vegas, unless somebody uploads it to TikTok or Instagram and it goes viral. Number 7. Don't stay too long For a lot of people, even laying on a beach at a resort in Jamaica can get old after. Well, that's probably not a good analogy, because what kind of person wouldn't love a 7-day long vacation, relaxing on a Caribbean beach under an umbrella and sipping piña coladas? But I digress. While most people visit Las Vegas to have a good time and forget their worries for a few days, too much of anything can get pretty old pretty quick. And it's always better to leave somewhere wanting more than to feel like you've stayed for too long. So how long do we recommend you staying if you're coming to have a good time? 3 days max. That way you get to experience enough without feeling that you've had enough. Number 6. Wear appropriate clothing and stay hydrated For all of you that may not know, Las Vegas sits in the middle of a desert. Also, for those of you that may not know, it gets hot as heck in the middle of a desert. Towards the end of the month of May, temperatures start creeping into the 90s in Las Vegas. And from June until the end of September, temperatures average around 100 degrees and at times can exceed 110 degrees. So not only you should pack light clothing, but you should also pack some items such as a hat, sunscreen, sunglasses, and a refill water bottle to make sure you stay hydrated. And to add the appropriate clothing theme, during the winter months, it does get cold when the sun sets, so packing for chilly weather would definitely be a good idea. Number 5. Take comfortable shoes One thing that a lot of people who visit Vegas for the first time want to do so as soon as they drop their bags off is walk the strip. What they soon find out is that they should have googled how long is the Las Vegas Strip, because it's long very long. We're talking 4.2 miles long to be exact. Yes, it's that long. 
But whether you're walking the length of the strip or not, you'll be doing a lot of walking as you take in all the sights. So here's a bit of advice. Leave the flats, the heels, and the boots in your room and lace up in a nice pair of comfortable sneakers. Your feet will thank you for the support. Number four is don't get wasted on the plane ride. Okay, so here's the scenario. You're all excited because you and your crew are on your way to Las Vegas to party like it's 1999. So you decide to get the party started early by having a few drinks inside the airport and a few more on the plane. The next thing you know, it's six hours later and you're waking up in your hotel and it's dark outside. When when you call your friends, they say they're out having a ball. And there goes your first day in Las Vegas. Moral of the story, wait until you drop off your bags at the hotel before you let the drink start flowing. Number 3. Take a taxi or don't? Answer this, which type of the following person are you? Are you the type that when you land on your vacation destination, you grab your luggage as soon as it slides into the carousel and then look for the first available taxi or Uber without asking the price until you're in the back seat? Or are you the type that likes to strike up conversations with strangers at the carousel and wait until the rest of the passengers have grabbed their luggage before finally grabbing your bright yellow suitcase with the colorful ribbons on it, then looking over it to make sure it's yours before finally walking outside and asking for the cheapest available ride? Well, whichever type you are for your ride to and from from the hotel, we have options for all. Option number one, hotel shuttles. Cost to go to the strip, free. There's a pretty good chance that if you're staying at a luxury hotel on the strip, that you won't be provided with anything free. And certainly not a free ride to and from the airport. And though they are dwindling, there are hotels in Las Vegas that still provide free shuttle service to and from the airport. So just give yours a ring before you travel date, and hey, you never know. It is Vegas, so you might get lucky. Option number two, airport shuttles. Cost to go to the strip, 30 to $36 round trip. Travel time to hotel is 30 to 45 minutes. Because these shuttles are shared with other riders, they will be making stops at multiple hotels. So depending on the location of your hotel, there's a chance that you may be the last person getting dropped off. Also, not only are these shuttles known to sometimes not arrive on time, but they also work on a first-come, first-served basis. So there's always a chance that even though you've paid in advance, they may already be full when they arrive to pick you up. Option number three, Uber. Cost to go to the strip, $15 to $50 for a one-way trip. This price, however, depends on the location of your hotel, the time of day, and the type of Uber ride you choose. Option number four, the private shuttle. Cost to go to the strip, $40 for a one-way trip, up to three passengers. Travel time to hotel is 10 minutes. Option number five is taxi. Cost to go to the strip is $19 to $27. Travel time to hotel, 10 minutes. The days of worrying about taxi drivers in Las Vegas scamming you by taking you the long way to get to your hotel are now a thing of the past. In December of 2019, airport zone pricing was implemented, so there is a set price for your ride from the airport to your hotel. The prices are split into three zones, with hotels in Zone 1 costing $19, hotels in Zone 2 costing $23, and hotels in Zone 3 costing $27. Option number 6, the city bus. Cost to go to the strip, $6. Travel time to hotel, however, is 30 to 45 minutes. If you're the person with the bright yellow suitcase or simply someone that's traveling on a true budget, the Las Vegas city bus does provide service to and from the airport. But of course, there are a few things that you need to know. The first is that the bus system arrives every 15 minutes and doesn't depart until enough passengers have boarded. The second is that there's no designated area for your luggage storage on the city bus, so you'll have to sit on your bags whenever you can. And the last thing is that you'll be getting dropped off at a bus stop, not at your hotel, so a bit of walking and luggage dragging will be required. Number 2. Don't eat the cheap hot dogs. With the arrival of the Allegiant Stadium and even more events to Las Vegas, the number of unpermitted street vendors selling hot dogs has only gotten worse. Yes, this is illegal, but that's not why we're mentioning it to you. Here's why we're warning you not to buy from these vendors and these food carts. Yes, the food is cheaper, but saving a few dollars on a hot dog or a burger that may have been sitting in somebody's hot trunk or garage or who knows where really worth being woken up at 2 o'clock in the morning and having to be rushed to the emergency room but hey, you're in Las Vegas, so go ahead and take that gamble if you want. But don't say you weren't warned. Number 1. Use the monorail and the trams Why walk when you can ride like a boss? In Las Vegas, the monorail and the trams are quick and easy ways to get around the strip without having to deal with long walks and the scorching desert heat. The Las Vegas monorail operates on a route 4 miles long from the Sahara Las Vegas station to the MGM Grand Station. 
There are seven stations located along the route for you to hop on and off. The trains arrive every four to eight minutes, so you'll never be waiting that long. The cost per ride is $5, but one day and multiple day passes are also available. The system is wheelchair accessible and children under five ride for free. The trams are three smaller systems that run on the west side of the strip and only service select hotels and resorts. The first is the Mandalay Bay to Luxor to Excalibur tram. The second is Park MGM to Aria Bellagio tram and the last system is Mirage to Treasure Island Tram. These trams are free to ride, but as we said, they only service those hotels mentioned in their description. Well, 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 that brings us to the end. We hope you enjoyed it and found some value from this video. If you did, we ask you to please do us a favor and hit the subscribe button if you love this type of content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.